This is the DLR Cast, the essential podcast for fans of Diamond David Lee Roth. All right, if you're hearing those screams and that music and that voiceover, well, you know what you're here for, and that's the DLR Cast, of course. As always, I'm Steve, joined by my good friend Darren Paltrowitz. What's happening, Darren? Steve, great to connect on this beautiful Sunday night. I think it's kind of beautiful. Is it? Is it beautiful? I th- it feels that way. I think so. We're not in the throes of winter yet where I'm at. So, uh, you know, I'm not walking in the winter wonderland just yet. So I'll take it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, a weird time of year. But, you know, every episode we do, it feels more natural to be doing this and great to even greater to be doing this to say uh, it very complex. Just first off, I want to say, well, let's get it. Uh, let's talk about this week's interview, because this week's interview uh, helped us immensely this week, even before the interview. Coming up, we've got Eric Senich from Van Halen Newsdesk.com, VHND.com, a place where I know you are and I'm extremely familiar with because it has been my one stop shop just about all the time for the last 10 plus years to get all the news I need on Dave and Van Halen. So I don't know how they always get the news, but uh, thanks to Eric's coming up in a bit. That was just a blast talking to him. I think everybody will enjoy yeah. that. And we should also say thank you to Van Halen News Desk for a few days ago, mentioning our podcast, putting some links out there. And now we want to say hello. so thank you to them and also hello and thank you to uh, all the new folks, subscribers, a ton of new downloads and streams. So uh, welcome and hope you're digging what we got for you. Yeah, it was great to get an email out of nowhere from Eric going, hey, just discovered your podcast. Because sometimes you're kind of in this bubble. I, I think you can relate to this, Steve, that when you tell a story to your significant other and they remember it, and then you have to tell that same exact story when you're out with another couple or a friend, and you can see your significant other elbowing you a little bit like, yeah, I've heard this before. <laughs> and it happens one or two more times. And you've only told the story three or four times in your life, but you're like, everyone has heard this. Well, all the time you kind of get that refresher of, wait, some of Van Halen's biggest fans and influencers don't know about us. And to hear from Eric out of nowhere, like, hey, just discovered your podcast, you realize, oh, there is a lot of room to grow here in the in the Roth world. Yeah, I'll tell you. And it, it reminded me very quickly, and I had a feeling it was going to be this way, long before the podcast, when you meet other Van Halen fans, and especially David Lee Roth fans, there's an immediate kinship. You, you can start chatting with a complete stranger in the parking lot at the Nassau Coliseum before one of the Eat em and Smile shows and just start babbling for two and a half hours before you even freaking took a tug off somebody's bong or started drinking on the way there on the Long Island Expressway uh, over to the southern state or whatever. <laughs> but the point is, is that we never met the guy before. And again, it's a kindred spirit. You just have a I just had a blast talking to him. That's how you and I started this thing, just from ta- finding out we had this interest. Everybody's got something to say about Dave and Van Halen and talk about him and Dave and Dave. Dave Solo especially, which yeah. is how we started this, and that's what we really talked about in a lot with Eric. And uh, man, it was a hell of a lot of fun, and it just, uh, you know, we didn't know him before going into this, and uh, I can't wait to have him back again. Yeah, and that all reminds me of last night I was watching a show on NBC Peacock, I guess that's NBC's crack at having a CBS All Access or what have you. But I saw the name of the guy who scored that uh, show, and he'd scored a couple other shows. I went, hey, saw your name on that. By the way, haven't spoken in a while. Maybe we should tape an interview or something. Here's what I'm working on. I sent him a link to the Roth cast, and he writes back, oh, my God, I love David Lee Roth. <laughs> my best friend is the biggest fan of David Lee Roth. And uh, I'm waiting to hear if that friend is, is somebody that we actually know, if, if he's another composer or a musician. But I think that it's this just great network of people who are clearly your friends for life uh, that, that listen to the show, that support the show, that love Dave. Exactly, exactly. So, well, once again, thank you for downloading and welcome. And I think you're going to dig this interview coming up with Eric from Van Halen Newsdesk.com. But before we get into that, let's talk quickly about something we did talk about Eric with and you yeah. and I should talk about. And that's earlier this week, a little back and forth between Sammy and Dave, something we hadn't really seen in a while. Right. <laughs> uh, and so the brief story is, uh, I guess Sammy said something about Dave. I don't know exactly. Oh, I, of course. Well, you can, you can, I've only heard bits and pieces of it, but Sammy was on Eddie Trunk a bit ago, a couple weeks ago and talked about, uh, 
the fact that there was a very tentative reunion that they were talking about doing for the summer of 2019, but Eddie uh, fell very ill. Uh, and I guess Sam said a couple things about Dave, uh, I guess, in the interview. Nothing. It didn't sound to me like it was very harsh, but that he was a little bit maybe hard to work with. He said, no, user friendly. User, he nice. wasn't user friendly. Right. He wasn't user friendly, which is a very diplomatic way of saying that sometimes Dave could be hard to work with. And anybody yeah. who's been fans of of Dave and Sammy, I mean, can remember the what was it? The 2002, uh, 2003 uh, Best of Both Worlds tour between the two of them. Well, maybe and we'll, it was O2. Maybe you're right. And I just corrected you like a awful human being, a garbage dumpster human being. So you might be right about that. No, I'm pretty sure it's O2 because I have a recollection of my son was not even a year old and we'll have to tell that story <laughs> some other time, but, uh, uh, and we should, we will do an episode sometime about that tour. But yeah. as far as what, da uh, what Dave happened with Dave and Sammy this week uh, and last week, I guess a couple weeks ago, I guess in response to that, Dave put out some very interesting, another very interesting uh, piece of artwork on, you know, on the web, on his, on Facebook and on his, yeah. on his web page. And it was, it looked to me like he was taking kind of a funny sort of pot shot about Sammy uh, flying 55 and his new plane or something. I'm not exactly sure what that reference fully, but I wasn't sure if Dave was, had his tongue firmly in cheek or whether it was a, uh, you know, a sharp jab at Mr. Hagar, but Sammy didn't seem to take it that way. I thought his response was classic. Classic or classy? Classic, actually both, classy <laughs> and classic. Yeah, as you make reference to with Eric on air, not to be uh, Mr. Spoiler here, but you say, I don't think that Sammy's ever ducked a microphone in his life. Yeah, and to be fair, neither is Dave, really, right? I mean, you know. Well, he's kind keep of ducking my uh, uh, microphone requests. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're only 18. We're only in, we're only 18 episodes into this uh, this thing here. So, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Right. Uh, but, you know, Sam, I thought Sammy's response was great. It was like, hey, that takes a lot. You know, basically he said, where can I buy? Can I see it? Can I buy it? Yeah. Uh, you know, he said, Dave's real talent. I know that takes a lot of time to do. And um, it sounded to me like he was being really sincere because it is a really cool piece of artwork, like everything Dave's been putting out uh, as far as his illustrations go. It is. But at the same time, Sammy was stoking the fire. I can't tell if it was 2017, 2018. There's a Howard Stern appearance with Sammy where he was talking about how he thought that the basically the kitchen sink, he wasn't calling it that, but he thought that that tour was great of him doing two songs, Roth doing two. And then he was kind of saying, yeah, Dave can dance. I'll sing. He'll dance. And he kept making that joke. And I'm sure that got to Dave in one way or another, not got to him emotionally, but I'm sure that quote got to him somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that reminded me. I mean, th this has been just going on for decades now, but it just reminded me what's what's Dave's crack that, he, that I've heard a number of times about Sammy. Sammy, Sammy uh, brings the party. I am the party. Was that yes. my paraphrase a bit? Yeah. So hey, listen, Sammy likes to go to a party. I am the party. That that, that was it. Exactly. That was, that it, was that it. amazing VH1 special about the 2002 or 2003 tour. You see Dave seeing that uh, pole side in the middle of the tour when it's all <laughs> catastrophe. Yeah. Well, we'll have to talk about that tour in depth. Hopefully we'll find somebody who maybe was a part of that tour uh, mm -hmm. and, can, and can talk a bit about it because uh, uh, it was interesting to say the least, both uh, on and off stage. So, but yeah. without further ado, let's get to... This week's interview with Eric Senich from VanHalenNewsDesk.com. And a great podcast of his own as well, which yes. we'll out later in the interview, which if you like our show, you'll love his show because he's talking about some of the great albums, sometimes with people who extensively researched those albums or played on those albums. Yep. And it's called Discoveries. Yes. Pun. You see the pun there? Disc. Yes. Discoveries. Disc. Disc. <laughs> Capitalized. Of yeah. Reese. Yes, Discovery. It is really cool, though. It, it's it's a really cool podcast. If you're a rock fan, you got to check this out. He really gets he really gets after it. It's just really cool to listen to. I wasn't aware of it. And now I'm a fan. So and uh, this is one of our longer interviews. But if you're one of us for better and for worse, <laughs> you're going to like it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, let's get after it. Darren, great to see and talk to you as all always. Here we go. And thanks for downloading and streaming and 
here we go. Here we go with Eric Senich from VanillaNewsDesk.com and his own podcast, Discovery with Eric Senich. You can find that podcast everywhere you find your podcast. Yeah, what Steve said. All right, as promised, here we are. We are psyched for this week's interview with Eric Senich, one of the guys behind one of our favorite sites, the Van Halen News Desk, VHND.com, a place that we frequent an awful, awful lot, yeah. especially of late. Eric, how are you? Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Guys, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me, Steve, Darren, um, Steve Roth. I mean, I, that's, that's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I, I, beautiful. I, I, I only halfway joke about the fact that uh, I do have an Uncle Manny somewhere in my heritage, yeah. you know, in my in my family tree. So, uh, you know, oh, I'm man. not exactly sure if there's, you could be a fourth distant cousin. I'm not sure, but. Uh, Thanks so much a, for having me, guys. No, I really, this, this is so cool. To, not only that you guys are having me on, but that you have a podcast devoted to David Lee Roth, man. This is it. We get to talk Roth. I mean, I'm all in. We got Dave and Dave, which is a great podcast. And now we got you guys. Love Excellent. It. Thank you. Well, I got to tell you, we, uh, we're big fans of the news desk and um, mainly, well, because it's a great site, but also because, I mean, it's no secret. Darren and I talk about this all the time. Van Halen has notoriously been maybe possibly the worst as far as getting news out to the fan base. I looked again at the official website. It hasn't been updated since 2015. Yeah. I mean, so thanks to you guys, I found out about the reunion, all the, you know, all the inside info. I mean, it is the, the one-stop shop for everything going on with Van Halen, man. And I'd love to know how you, how you got into it and just yeah. how you get news and all that well, stuff. But first, big kudos for keeping us up to date. Well, yeah, well, I appreciate it. And first and foremost, just right up front, Jeff Hausman. You know, he's the guy. He's the, he's the publisher. He's the, he's the one who's just a, you know, a diehard fan. And has been keeping this name Van Halen, uh, you know, alive as much as he possibly can, you know, with what he can do, which is an online presence, you know, because as you said, the Van Halen website, you know, it 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 was always frustrating for fans because you know it wasn't updated. So, you know, it's interesting if you Google Van Halen, you know, you see the Van Halen news desk come up there, like second or third on the list. It's like right up there. So, you know, you Google any other band you know, fan sites, there are some great fan sites out there, but you know, it's, you'd be hard pressed to find one that's that high up on a Google search list. And, you know, and that's, that's something that, you know, I think Jeff takes, takes a, a lot of pride in. I think he's, he's super excited to, 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 to just know how many people go on to the site every day and he's blown away by it. He's blown away by the, you know, he runs the Van Halen store, Van Halen store.com. So, you know, he sells the merchandise there and he's just blown away by the number of people that are, you know, just that our fans of this band, despite whether you want to say, you know, the, the band didn't do a good job of promoting or not, that's, that's everybody's opinion and they're entitled to it. But, you know, d despite that, I mean, there's still this huge fan base. Um, so it started, Jeff started out doing the Inside Magazine. Do you guys remember that? The I Inside do. Oh, Magazine. yeah. 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 Yep. And then I was a huge fan of that. And so that used to, that was back in the 90s. And, uh, and, and then it, it just, you know, eventually just became an online thing. And for, for me, I've, I've been writing for the news desk. I, I want to say, you know, as we get older, just every year, just, just blends into another. And it's like, oh my God, I think it might be three, four, five years now that I've been writing for, for Jeff. So it's just been great, you know, ever since day one, you know, um, I think, you know, did you want me, to, did you ask me already how it all started, how I started writing for the news desk? I can't recall. I think we, you yeah. asked me off the air, but yeah, I was working for a radio station in, in Connecticut. Uh, and at some point that radio station had new owners that really wanted an online presence and they wanted their, their DJs to write blogs. And I was happy to do it because I, I went to college for, for journalism. I got a, a bachelor's degree in, in journalism and became a sports writer and was a sports editor of a newspaper in Connecticut. And I, and I did that, but then I got into radio and stopped writing. And so this was, this was an opportunity, opportunity for me to write again right. about music. So I would uh, often, uh, it was funny because my program director said, no, don't write about Van Halen all the time. You know, <laughs> says, no, I won't, I won't. But cause I love, I love so many bands which, uh, which is what my, my podcast is about, all classic rock bands, which I can mention a little later on. But anyway, so I did one on Dave. 
and I think it was on his, his greatest lyrics. And, and I used to post them on the VH links. We know what the VH links is. Yes. The message so we, board. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody who's listening doesn't know of them, but just in <laughs> case that's, that's a great website too, with all the fans yeah. come together and, and talk about the band. So I used to post them there and say, Hey guys, you know, here's, you know, I just wrote this article on, uh, on Dave for the, my radio station. Check it out. Well, Jeff, you know, read it and he reached out to me through the links, sent me a, a message there. I said, would you like to write for the news desk? And I was like, are you kidding me? Of course. And I'll never forget because our first call like that we made, uh, you know, we're in different States. So, you know, we just, we did everything over the phone and, and, before we even got down to business, it was just like 45 minutes of talking Van Halen yeah. and you know, what's your favorite album? And you know, it was just so cool. And, uh, and I was a little bit like, man, this is cool, man. I'm talking to Jeff Houseman, the guy from the Van Halen news desk. Yeah, man. You know, right. And he's a, such a nice guy. And, and, and he, uh, again, he just loves Van Halen. So he said, you know, listen, man, I need some help. If you, if you can contribute some articles, I would love it. And that's how it started. And then eventually, as time went on, I was, you know, to the point now where I have a little more access where I can, you know, I could put in some articles, put them up and, and, uh, you know, he kind of gave me the, uh, uh, the okay to, to do things, uh, you know, with, without having, cause usually I would send the article to him and then he'd put it in and upload it onto the website. And, and, but I was you know writing so much and sending so much to him and he had so little time to do anything on his own. He said, Hey, listen, why don't you go ahead and, and, you know, do what you can do. And, Boy, what a time, man, that we're talking now. I mean, there's, there's, you know, obviously Eddie's passing, but there's Wolfgang. There's, there's the Dave, there's the Dave versus Sammy. Oh, that's yeah. always, yeah. you know, I, know. I mean. Steve sent me that article yesterday. That was from you guys, right? The, the analysis of the cartoon. Yeah, that might've been. Cause we, let's see, we had, I got everything up in front of me here. Did you, did you happen to catch Steve, by the way, on, on the, the post that we put up on your podcast that somebody actually said is Steve Roth. Oh, yes. no, okay. You, you know what I'm talking about? Is that, Oh yeah. He says, is Steve Roth Dave's cousin? <laughs> you know, actually the Let's weird thing is I haven't, that rumor. The, the weird thing is I haven't seen the comments because when I pull up the comments, there's comments about somebody's 50th birthday party. So I don't know where something is. I, I, so I'm, I'm like, uh Oh, nobody slagging up. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's so funny i always oh. go through the comments I, I i just hope like as long as like 80 percent of them are positive that's fine all of them yeah. are positive except that somebody was being accused of trolling and they were saying somebody should ban the troll and that's, <laughs> when, that's when i lost it but uh, i know they asked about steve being related to dave <laughs> yeah 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 no i mean the comments were good and you know you always have to you know sometimes i'll look at the comments kind of like with one eye shut and eye open, <laughs> like, oh shit yeah but no no but, but there's some great fans on there too some yeah. very very cool fans that uh you know have said some nice things but i mean you know what hey they they've got a right to their opinion so if as long as it's nothing personal or vicious you know we're oh, not absolutely, gonna, absolutely we're not gonna yank it down so but uh, yeah, the, I'm just looking here. It was the, yeah. So Sammy Hagar responds to David Lee Roth's Red Rocker cartoon. So yeah, <laughs> man, that, that, you know, it, I'm, I'm actually glad that Sammy did post what he did because I think it cooled things off a little bit. In other words, I mean, they're just having fun with it. I think. I, um, I think so. Yeah. During a really tough time. I mean, Dave's been, yeah a lot more silent than Sammy during the last month and a half, which is, yeah. uh, um, you know, Sammy had the thing, his concert that he already had booked and stuff. And I can make a joke that Sammy never, you know, ducked a microphone before, but neither is Dave, you know, but having said that, I mean, what Sammy went on Eddie trunk and, you know, it's been, I thought it was, you know, I'm always sitting there with biting my nails whenever something goes, goes back and forth between them. Like, uh Oh, what is this going to be? But it's been respectful. It's been good. And I, you know, I mean, it's all about a bigger thing than those two guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you want to look at the other side of it, okay. I can say for those who were saying now's not the time because Eddie just passed. I hear you. You know, maybe, they, maybe they should just uh, keep a low profile. That's fine. I can go there. But, but having said that, they have gotten into this little battle. And, and really, it's, 
you know, life is going on for Sammy and Dave and they're, part of their lives are to kind of rib each other at this point. Yeah, they're, exactly. they're forever. Yeah. They're forever intertwined. They, whether they like it or not, and I don't think either of them like it, they have to deal with each other. Sammy had to deal with, with singing the Dave songs, which he didn't want to, but he did. Dave had to always deal with the fact that Sammy with Van Halen, they did really well. Surprisingly. I don't think anybody expected. I think Dave just figured he would be able to come back to the band because, you know, maybe they would do an album with Sammy, it would bomb, and he'd come back. I don't know. I'm not speaking for him, but I'm just saying, you know, he, so Dave had to answer all the Sammy questions, and there was no way Dave was going to sing the Sammy songs when, when they did the Sam and Dave tour. You know, they, they, they're forever, again, just intertwined, and they're part of Van Halen history, whether they like it or not. And Sammy, you know, he, he took the high road on that last one. He yeah. said... Yeah, he says, I want to thank my old buddy Dave for considering me interesting enough to be the subject of his fine art hobby. And then he adds, he went directly on Roth's Instagram post. Dave, my old buddy, I would love to buy this piece of fine art. Is it for sale? How much? And where can I see it in person? So, but I tell you, man, Dave's talented, ain't he? Yeah. Oh, man, that dude, what can he do? Yeah, he, he is like... Uh, you know, he, he's, it's like a buffet, man. He, he, he offers up many, many versions of Dave. I mean, you think <laughs> about, you know, you got the Van Halen Dave, which is the most popular and that's, that's the one that, that sells the most, but you've got, you know, writer Dave, radio Dave, artist Dave, Come martial on. artist Dave. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yep. Karate Dave. You beat me. Karate too. Dave. <laughs> kayaking Dave. EMT Dave. I mean, you know, he's basically like, here, here's all of me. Cause he's just, he's just a brilliant guy. Yeah, he's Japanese just so, Dave. Japanese yeah. Dave. As, <laughs> as know, we and, saw, as we saw recently, dystopian sci-fi epic Dave. Um, we're oh still my God. To, we're still trying to figure out what the Roth yeah. project was all about. And he'll put it all out there and say, look, you like it, you like it. You don't, I'm still going to be around. What's that quote he would say, right? Yeah. And so, you know, but he knows, he knows that the, uh, you know, again, his, his top seller is Van Halen, Dave, and he knows that, but, but he, he, you can't just keep him down to just one thing. And I'll tell you I, what I did like, I, I guess I'm in the minority. I'm interested in what you guys thought of these songs. I love the strumming with the devil songs that he did. The bluegrass songs. I, yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I didn't lie to, I'm not a fan of the Vegas stuff that he did. In fact, it was the only tour that I actually didn't go to see him when he came to Connecticut in 95, the Vegas tour. I wasn't digging that, but I totally just respect it, man. I think it's just cool. He's going to do what he wants to do, what he, what he's inspired to do. And, um, which, which, you know, makes me, uh, this is a question for you guys. So, you know, was he inspired to do this daily catastrophe red rocker? Uh, illustration because of maybe what Sammy said on Eddie Trunk, which was, you know, Eddie was, uh, Eddie was asking we'll Sammy. And I'll sing that. Day. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, Dave's going to pull his old tricks and he's going to, he's going to want to uh, headline and he's going to, he's not going to want to, he's not, he, he's not user friendly, you know? So I wonder if Dave was, what was, was that a response or was it just, was it just something that came to Dave's mind? Because the, these these illustrations, I, I can't imagine he can't just whip them up in like one day. That's what I, I was know. thinking. That had to take hours, right? I mean, yeah, man, he's he is he is just he is a riot, man. So uh, yeah, quite quite a quite a a story there, the Dave versus Sammy battle, and you know, and I also want to get into to Wolfgang's song and also the passing of Eddie. But just one last thing, I guess on on Dave is just, this was recent just before I went on with you guys is, um, is Dave, Dave was, did an interview with variety. So he was talking about his song somewhere over the rainbow bar and grill. Um, and I, I don't think you guys had seen this because it just came out right before we yeah. went, started to record. Right. A friend of mine sent uh, me an email er earlier today and he's like, hey, what do you think about the Roth project? And it's like, oh, I guess he just heard about it today. And now that I see that the Variety piece is focused on that, maybe that's why some people are finding out about it now. That might be it. Yeah, Variety interviewed him. And I think the focus of the interview was to promote that 
the Roth project, but they did bring up the single somewhere over the rainbow bar and grill, which he dedicated to Eddie and Roth pointed out a specific lyric in the song down at the local canteen. You know, the smell of fresh sawdust when they first throw it on the floor. Roth said that that was his, his way of paying tribute to, to Eddie. Um, uh, do, do you want, I can read his quote here. I yeah. wait. That's not chronologically true by any means. That song's been done yeah. for like six years. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. More than six years, yeah. Yeah. That was in 07. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's from the mythical John Five album that he cut. Exactly. Or yeah, that's the first thing, like first thing the, I wonder too. Or is this like the the Little Ain't Enough video where it says the final tour twenty twenty? <laughs> yeah, isn't that wild, huh? Yeah. I know. Um, yeah, because well, you guys were talking about in the last episode I was listening to, you guys talk about, uh, you know, the, it was probably the reason that Dave didn't, didn't release that in 2007 is because of Eddie's You Can't Be In Two Bands At Once. Possibly. I, I, do you remember that? I mean, I wonder, wondered about that. And then maybe he just didn't also want to kind of cloud up the waters because who knows, you know, how tenuous that, first reunion might have been you know i mean i right. think we were we were all shocked when i first saw that first you know that the 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 live preview the preview that they did for family and friends i remember that was on youtube and i was like holy shit this is actually happening you know i never thought this oh. would ever happen you know I, and you know we talk about this a lot it's like how did that reunion actually happen because if you remember, there was like, I think Eddie did like a Guitar World feature. Dave did, no, there was no press on that thing except for that opening press conference where they were together. Right. And I often wonder if that was by design. If everybody keeps their mouth shut, things will be smooth, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know how that whole thing started with, with Dave rejoining the band in 07? Do you know this story? Involving I want to hear it. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Wolfgang, Wolfgang discovered the, the records and... Uh, he said, I, I always heard that he was the, the, you know, kind of the, the, the starting point for it. And, but, right. you know, to, but then Wolfgang was uh, on Howard Stern, was it two weeks ago? And I just loved the story he told where he's like, you know, his 14 year old kid picks up the phone, calls Dave's yeah. management. I mean, you know, to think that might not have happened at all. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he, I think he even called Dave direct, I believe. And he, you know, he wrote up, on a piece of paper, what he wanted to say to Dave. He says, Hey Dave, this is Wolfgang and his son. We're over here jamming. Would you like to come over and jam? With yeah. Us? <laughs> I, I also love the fact that Eddie was like, yeah, go ahead, reach out to him. I mean, that kind of blew, yeah. my, that kind of said, blew me well, away 10, too. 10, 15 minutes later, Dave calls Eddie and says, Ed, I think your son just called me. He said, he said, uh, you want me to come over and jam or what, what's going on? And Ed's like, I don't know, man, talk to Wolfgang. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic it's awesome i'm also very yeah. thankful for the fact that you know he discovered the likes of the first six albums as opposed to say like you know ou812 and 5150 so i mean right, he, right you know i mean no knock on that stuff but this is the dlr cast after all so. <laughs> exactly. well you know i just heard uh wolfgang on uh it's called talking rock with meltdown the name of the dj's meltdown out of detroit and he asked wolfgang what were his favorite albums and he said, with the Day Vera, it is Fair Warning in 1984. He says he loves all of them, but Fair Warning in 1984 are the two. And interesting enough, he said, um, For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge and Balance, his two favorite Sammy era. Wow. Really? Interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where yeah. Sonrisa Salvaje uh, ranks on <laughs> Oh, isn't that so? Oh, that's so. <laughs> Sorry, I had that, to go to receive. That's we so classic dave though to do that you know totally totally yeah and that's now back out like you can get that i have amazon music unlimited it's there for a while i think it was out of print i think it's back in print now yeah eat him and smile in spanish sunrise so it's sunrise salvaje so salvaje salvaje Salvaje. timido and uh (laughs) yankee roses yankee rose in spanish yeah (laughs) yankee yeah that's so great oh my god (laughs) Those are the best videos, man. The best videos. And I, and I like you, Steve, you were talking in that last episode, you know, and, and 
Darren too, you were talking about how you're just searching the internet for whatever you can find on Dave, but back in the day, pre-internet, you would, anything Dave related, you would be like, Oh shit, look at this. You know, I go to an old record store and it'd be something with Dave, like an old poster or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, but you were mentioning the hard and heavy video. Oh yeah. 1991. Dave is on the hood of his car and he's plucking out stuff from a bag and they were all vinyl yep. versions of Van Halen. He's talking. About, yeah. And I remember being at a rental store and I saw that and I'm like, I have to buy it, you know? And it was only a small segment with Dave, but um, I, I would, anything you could find on Roth. Anything, yeah. You know? I, yeah. Oh. I mean, I would, I would, you know, try to get Kerrang magazine all the time. Uh, yeah. You know, actually in, in Connecticut, the old, I think it was Rhymes Records, not to go down that road a long time ago, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, you know, anything because I mean, we all, you know, we've all played this game, Sammy versus Dave and all that. And I will tell you, we say this all the time. I mean, I love the Sammy stuff, but for yeah. my money, you know, Dave, we love Dave's solo albums, which, you know, that's was kind of the genesis of this podcast that the that his music, I think a lot of people have forgotten about over the years and not just because he got back with, with Van Halen. And, but I mean, at the time though, I mean, I wanted, I thought he should have been everywhere for a little ain't enough. And he, there, he did get a lot of press. I mean, he did, he was, I'm, I, he did, um, he did, uh, I was going to say black velvet cause it's just sounds just like black velvet, but tell uh, the truth, tell the truth. He did ah, that. On, that's so <laughs> funny. That, yeah, I know. Everybody used to say that. Uh, he did that on Letterman. Yeah. Yep. So he was out there, but in my mind, it's just like, okay, he, you know, this should be everywhere. Right. I mean, and I love that record. And when I found that hard and heavy thing, I was just like, yes, anything I could get my hands on. You know, it's so crazy hearing you talk. It's like, there's actually someone else out there that thinks like me because <laughs> when I when I and that so I was going to college at the time in New Haven, and uh, at that time, I had become a huge Dave fan around '88. So now I was in college, and my assumption was that any time Dave was going to be back out with an album, that the entire planet, not just like people within my area, but the entire planet and any other planets that have civilization are going to be freaking out over this. And so I would look at my friends. I'm like, dude, don't you get it? Fucking Roth, man. He's got an album out. Little ain't enough. And they're like, yeah, that's great. And yeah. I used to drive, drive me nuts. So in my mind, I just assumed he was the greatest and he still is. I don't care. But, right. You know, right. but like, it was so funny because when, and you're right though, because when a little, little ain't enough came out, uh, it had a little bit of a, you know, it had a short life there where it had the right. little ain't enough song and video did well on MTV, sensible shoes did well. And then it was gone, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and for unlawful carnal knowledge was still going and yeah. going and going singles and coming I, out, videos coming I, out awards, you know, yeah. and, um, and, and that it, was a bummer. That was a bummer. Cause that's a, it, that's a great album. It's a great yeah. album. It, bro it broke my heart too because I saw that tour it was with Cinderella and Extreme in like mm -hmm. a half half filled uh, Knickerbocker Arena up in Albany, and I was just like, "Oh man, I, I, you know, you just don't want to see your heroes t take any sort of tumble like that." And I, so of course, yeah. it's, look, it's going to be somewhat inevitable, but you know, it's it's impossible to stay at that massive level for a long stretch of time. I mean, you know, forever. I mean, look at Van Halen three, right? But yes, I mean, yes. it wasn't like, it wasn't like uh, a little way enough was this massive shift for Dave, shift for Dave, you know, I mean, but I often think, I mean, you know, what if that original Eat and Smile band stuck it out for, you know, right. for those albums? I mean, it, it could have been, it would have been something completely different musically. Yeah. And I think maybe, it would have kept that sales level and that exposure level that much higher for Dave. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and in defense of Dave too, we were talking 91 where, you know, Van Halen was one of the few bands, Aerosmith being the other of those heritage rock bands that were able to uh, somehow get around that grunge era and still do well. And I think right now was, was a, a big thing for Van Halen because it was, uh, you know, it, it was a song that was of the time it, it, it worked. It wasn't a, quote unquote hair band song the hair band right. labels always you know drives drives people nuts you know because i never looked at van halen as a hair band but right. anyway um but yeah so so dave was up against that even more so you know and you talk about the bummer that a little late enough wasn't as big as it you'd hoped it would be then you go to your filthy little mouth in 1994 you know and and that was 
the wake up call because um, I went to see Dave at a place called the Sting in New Britain, Connecticut. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, because Steve yep. is you're from you know you you were, were living in Connecticut for a while, and uh, and he was there, and there was about I don't know what it would fit, maybe a couple thousand. And then it was the Pops. fall of 90. Yeah. Fall of 95. And I just remember distinctly that night that I was going with my brother to that show and um, green day was the big thing at the time. Dookie was the huge album, you know? And I just remember thinking that, and I was like, damn, man, you know, 10 years ago, Dave was the front man for Van Halen in 1984 oh. was out, you know? So he was playing this little club, but here's the, here's the come back around it just to put a, positive spin on all that number one dave proved to me at that point that he's the ultimate professional because he went out there on this stage big small no matter what the stage is he loves performing and he gave it everything he finished the show and he did like a succession of like seven eight nine ten kicks boom 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 you know like whatever he could do on that small stage it, he he was still working it he wasn't just like, yeah, I'm here. Let's get this over with. He <laughs> right. put on a show, you know, and, and to his credit, that, that was like that first sign that he's going to just keep working through this. And he did, man. And he came back around and there was a resurgence of interest in him in the late nineties. And then he gets back with, he gets back with Van Halen in 07. And um, I just, I, I think that I grew even a more of an appreciation for him and a respect for him as a performer and as a, and as a, just a guy who just works, works his ass off. And, and he, you know, yeah. I, that was the one, anytime I would hear comments or read comments online about, you know, with Dave's vocals, he was lazy and this, that, and the other. I, I think if you can say many things about Dave, lazy, I don't think is one of them. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think lazy is one of them. I think his vocals, I think, you know, you know, you, he, he would try different things vocally. In fact, you felt the little mouth is when is the first time when he, when vocally his voice did change, he was hitting different uh, notes and he was definitely sounding different. He wasn't sounding like the Dave of old. Yeah. I always um, thought that I always thought that too, the first time I heard that. And I mean, the thing with his, with all his albums that I always liked that I think, ultimately hurt him a bit in the marketplace was he took chances. I mean, stylistically, I mean, you know, it would have been real easy for him to just do eat him and smile part three. Right. And, yep. you know, but I mean, it was a huge leap. I remember writing for my college paper calling, you know, eat him and smile was a second round knockout, but skyscraper was, a, was a very satisfying 15 round decision, you mm -hmm. know, where it was yeah. just like, it was, if, if, if you put aside the fact, Oh man, this is an eat him and smile. You went, Oh my God, this is an amazing record. And when you get to a little ain't enough, you go, Oh my God, Vi's gone. And you go, wait a minute, hold on. The Bissonette brothers are, you know, a great rhythm section. Jason Becker's amazing. Steve Hunter adds some blues there. I mean, I defy anyone if you're, you know, to not listen to, to listen to drop in a bucket and go, Holy shit, this is one of the best Dave songs ever from. A oh, I love drop in the bucket. Oh my God. I, w I wish he released that as a single. Same here. And yeah. I used to envision in my head what the video would have been. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah. What a great song that is, isn't it? The way it, the second half when it kicks into that, oh. the synthesizer underneath it and this groove. Yeah. Anybody, oh. you know, anybody listening to this, you know, who's a Roth fan probably already knows the song, but if you haven't, give that song a listen, man. Great yeah. song. I was bummed that wasn't released as a single. Yeah, yeah. Same here. So, I mean, he took, you know, he took chances. He did different things. I mean, would they have, and Darren and I, you, Darren, definitely weigh in on this because you and I talk about it too as far if, as like... If I lose you guys, I'll exit out and then I'll email a link immediately and we'll continue, okay? Yeah, right. we coming up on 40? We... We're coming up on 40. All right. All right. Yeah. But real quickly, I mean, stuff like the full bug. I mean, Dave was oh, yeah. the soul and the horsepower from the very beginning, you know? Mm -hmm. And that just... He's got such eclectic taste it always carried into the music. And that's what... That's what... One of the things I always loved about him. Boy, he could have so, so easily have just made Eat Him and Smile 2, Eat Him and Smile 3. He's an artist. There's, there's, yeah. I mean, he, sure, does he want it? He wants to be a rock star. He wants to be famous. He wants people to know him, but not, not to the point where he's going to sell himself out and just make music that he doesn't want to make or make music that he's already made. You know, you, you, you turn, who's the, the best example of that? Led Zeppelin. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 the podcast that I have, Discovery, with Eric Senich, is, is, is across the board classic rock. So it's, Mostly it gets into albums, but sometimes songs, sometimes a particular artist. 
Led Zeppelin too. So I think it was Jimmy Page and or Robert Plant who were saying, look, we, we're not going to make the same album again. We're not even going to make an album that sounds a little bit like the last one. We're going to just keep experimenting and do what we feel we want to do at the time. And with, and with Dave, you know, he, he surprised, I think, a lot of people with Skyscraper because if you look back to the Van Halen days, he wasn't, he wasn't, a, uh, he wasn't for Jump being released as a single because, you know, he, he, because of keyboards. He thought Eddie should stick to the guitar. But I think, right. you know, he, he did embrace it. And, you know, I, I love Skyscraper. I, oh, I, I love it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad you guys say that because I do remember – from what, I, from, from what I remember most from that time was most of the people that, that were Dave diehards didn't like it. So, so I'm glad to hear you guys say it. Most of the people that weren't Dave diehards loved the album. Like my best friend, Mike, you know, roommate, friends from high school. They loved Just Like Paradise. They loved Damn Good. Um, I think it's a great album. I, I it's, it's not, the, th the thing is, it's my favorite Dave solo album. Is it objectively his best? No, you got I think you got to go with Eat Him and Smile just because yeah. it's just a classic album. Um, but Skyscraper is just fun and it's experimental and um, I love it. I mean, you know, I admit, I admit I'm, I'm a sucker for a great pop rock song. You know, I mean, I, I know some of the, some, especially the old school Dave stuff, you could, I guess you could call it pop, but that's like hard rock and roll, man. It's classic. That's some badass shit, man. You know, women and children first and fair warning and all that. I love that too. But I also love a great pop rock song. It's why I love Jump. You know, so just like Paradise, man, that, that's, that's an interesting story. There was, I think it was, uh, was it Greg Bissonette was just talking about, was it Greg Bissonette? Somebody was telling Rolling Stone recently, it might have been Greg Bissonette about just like paradise somebody no you know who it was who was dave's keyboardist on that skyscraper brett record? tuggle yes bingo <laughs> brett tuggle and he's the one who brought i think he brought the song to dave and dave popped it into uh, his cassette player and like just immediately just came up with the lyrics and and off they went you know the song was made and cv vine doesn't like just like paradise but oh, i think okay. you know he shows great restraint on that and he's he's got you know like you know, that minimalist approach to his solo, like where he could do a, a lot more, but didn't for the sake of the song. And I just love it. Love that song. What, what do you think about the song, The Bottom Line? That is, that's one of my favorite Dave songs ever. And it I, is, huh? Yeah. And it, that was uh, the, the set opener on the Skyscraper tour. Am I, right? I believe that was the opener. Yeah. Which, what a great tour. I mean, he comes out on the boxing ring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Bottom Line. It, it's actually one of it, it's it would be on the bottom of the list for me in terms of favorite songs from the album. I, I, I do like it, um, but it took me a little bit longer to, to get into than just like Paradise is immediate. Damn good is immediate. I'll tell you what's a great song. And I just interviewed Martin Popoff. Who, oh, who, yeah. Great. Okay. Author. Oh, what a yep. great author. And he, he's such a great guest. And he loves Hina. Oh, yeah. Hina. And, I, and, I, and then when he said that, I said, you know, you're right, man. That is a freaking great song. Uh, Hina, I'm just going to look it up here on the computer. Hina is a great song. W well, okay, what do you guys think of Stand Up? Kind of a controversial one with, with Dave because it's not, that's keyboard heavy. It sounds a little dated, you think? Dated, but good. I love it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I loved it. I remember at the time, just, that was, that was an odd one. And then, um, uh, and then it grew and then it grew on me because it just seemed like I, I don't know i just it's not my favorite song on the album but that one uh i was like okay is he just going for a hit here but clearly it was with just like paradise and that was huge and that's a huge hook stand up it, it's kind of like a slow boil you know it's like all right yeah i'm digging this i'll tell you the mystery to me is two fools a minute because <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> the clock on the clubhouse wall says it's <laughs> time to go right the song's over yeah, yeah that, that yeah, that's got some cool uh, Billy Sheehan bass playing on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. That's, yeah, big time. And, you know, on that record, too, I mean, I remember I had some friends of mine, 
I mean, it was immediately in the power rotation in my car. And, you know, they're like, do we have to listen to Skyscraper again? I'm just like, <laughs> are you kidding? How do you get beyond? How do you even get it. beyond? You know, your real bottom line is when your spine goes snap, crackle, and pop. Oh, pow. You know what I mean? It's like, exactly. come on. Are you kidding me? And you guys are fucking around with what, you know. I was going out of my oh, mind that nobody, funny. well, it's not, it's not eat him and smile. And I'm like, yeah, no, no shit. It's not eat him and smile, but just listen to this, you this know, knuckle, crazy. knuckle bones. And it's just, what a, I mean, yeah. oh man, yeah. this is twilight zone. I'm, I think, uh, I think Steve Roth is my alter, you know, alter <laughs> ego. Cause I, I had my, my roommate, Mike, I love him, man. He's my best friend. And I, and I was the best man at his wedding. And I actually got up for my speech and said, this is how I know he's a great friend. I used to play your filthy little mouth in our dorm room so much to finally one day he comes walking out. He's like, dude, if I have to hear she's my machine one more time, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed so hard. I'm like, I know, man, but I'm just, I go, you just got to listen, man. It's good. You got like, I was forcing him to like Roth. Now he's the one who loves skyscrapers. So I don't think he would have, I don't think he would have had an issue with me playing that a lot. But no, it's so funny because yeah, your friends you would drive your friends nuts. Oh, I, I literally I, had I literally had a friend of mine just basically ask me to leave his house because he couldn't take me talking. About <laughs> He's like, dude, everything is Roth with you, Roth, Roth, Roth. And I thought like that's what Eddie was saying when he had Gary Sharon in one of those interviews. He goes, he goes, all I ever hear is Roth, Roth, Roth. Right. <laughs> that's what I would hear. It's like, dude, enough. I used to do the Roth kicks. Oh, you know, same here. I, I swear to God, I ended up in a chiropractor's office. <laughs> and, and this guy was so cool. Bill Zarello, we called him Z-Man. He loved Van Halen. So, he, so he, he was dying when I told him this. I did the Roth kick one night on a Thursday night going out, you know, just getting drunk with my buddies in college on an icy cold night. And I did the Roth kick. And I slipped and fell on my back. And so I go to my chiropractor that following week and I go, man, my back is killing me. He's like, what the hell did you do, man? You know, <laughs> and he, was just, he was really cool. A young guy. So he was like, you know, he was, he was cool to talk. He's like, what the hell did you do to yourself? I go, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I go, I can't <laughs> think of anything that I did. I go, I know the other night though, I was like doing, you know, I did one of my Roth kicks and I slipped on the ice and fell. And he looks at me, he's like, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> What do you think is the reason that you're here right now? Your back is killing you. Oh my God, so funny. Anyway, let's get back on topic. Well, I'm sorry, well no, I no, drifting. I can further I sidebar. I'll sidebar and wow. I'll say the reason I own three copies of uh, Skyscraper on vinyls when I got baked a month ago and I, <laughs> I got on Amazon and I, I just kept bidding on every oh, I good. could find of Skyscraper on eBay or Amazon. I'm like, oh, well, they're not going to take this bid or that bid. And ah. I won all the auctions. <laughs> three copies. You have three copies. Can I have one, Darren? <laughs> if you want one, you can have one. Oh, well, okay. College dorm room. I had the skyscraper poster. Dave with his weightlifting gloves with the cutoff fingers, and he's got this. He's got this uh, like multicolored scarf around his neck, and it's up in my dorm room wall. Okay. Did did I not hear it from my floor mates? Like you have. Like, who is that on your wall, you know? Or there was one from 78, Dave, like a bare-chested Dave, and I got the poster up on my wall. I'll tell you what's a cool one, though. <laughs> my friend Tony Romano, uh, just talked to him, you know, just recently because he was so bummed that Eddie passed. And, he, and uh, I exchanged uh, my Steve Garvey poster for my very first CD, which was 1984, because he was this hardcore Dodger fan. He goes, dude, what – Steve Garvey, man. You know, I go, yeah, yeah. I go, somebody gave that to me. I just, you know, needed to put it up on my wall. And I was a Red Sox fan. And he goes, what do you want for that? What do you want? I go, I don't know. I mean, what do you got? He goes, I, I got CDs. Well, what CD do you want? I go, well, what do you have? You have any Van Halen? He goes, I have 1984. I go, you got a deal, man. Give me the 1984 CD and I will give you the poster. And to this day, he remembers that. He goes, I still have that Steve Garvey poster. Yeah. Man, good days, good times, good times. I would play Van Halen every time before I'd go out with my buddies, man, and just, you know, whack a few beers and, and, and just, just get fired up to the sound of Eddie's guitar. Fired up. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Still happens yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. It's, exactly. It's, it's so funny. We're all kind of cut from the same cloth here because I, I was like just an absolute evangelist for those records that 
you know, people just unfortunately didn't care about. I mean, yeah. you know, I was, I mean, I played your filthy little mouth incessantly, basically pretty much always skipping over no big ting because I mean, just <laughs> you, you no have to. But, <laughs> I, but, I, I got to say, I like no big ting. The one I skip over, it would be have to be cheating heart cafe. I can't. That one. Yeah. yeah. That's my second one too. Yeah. That's just yeah. too premeditated. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love you, Dave, but I just can't embrace that one i don't know why but nightlife is cool that cover of nightlife sunburn uh the title track um looking through it now experience is great big train is one big oh, train is one that he was playing uh recently wasn't he, yeah, he played he that in vegas that was the second song both nights i saw him yep. that was the big surprise for me on that set list i was like no way this is well, well, totally unexpected <laughs> yeah Everybody's got the monkey. I thought was cool. I thought that was a cool single. So, uh, any idea why the DLR band album isn't on Spotify? Is that a print and all that? Have you ever heard anything like that? No, I can't recall. I mean, if I did, I don't remember. I mean, I know it was on. I didn't. Dave kind of wasn't that his own. Yeah, what was that records? I think was his yeah. label. So I'm I'm guessing it's a it's a label issue. But it really it's 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 criminal that that's not available well, i would imagine um, he has he owns the rights to it the funny yeah. thing is i look the label for somewhere over the rainbow bar and grill is what was that records it so, is I mean, anytime yeah maybe, maybe it just never occurred to anybody to upload it to you know to get it onto all the digital you know, services yeah i mean i think i think you know it, it 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 just could be because you know just what we're talking about is is he's kind of criminally overlooked in terms of certain era of the of his career where I think people, but that album did get a lot of an attention. You know, it was kind of a return to yeah. form. It was, you know, it, it, so I'm it surprised. Got airplay. Yeah, but I'm sure, you know, hopefully someday it does, it does wind up back on, uh, on, on all these platforms like Spotify. It's definitely not on Spotify. You yeah, know, because I, I checked it wasn't. I mean, Diamond Dave, that album is on Spotify. Yeah. Ashley yeah. Abernathy is on Spotify, but, <laughs> oh but the R band is not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. It should be, that's for sure. It, it really it really should. Maybe someday. Best, best song on the DLR band, or at least the one that gets played the most for me, Relentless. Yeah, Relentless, yep. That song is just insane. The lyrics and the riff, I mean, just, well, I can, that just, that thing just kills me every single time. And he brought in a lot of people for that album. He's got, he's got some names I'm not even familiar with. Bob Marlette was... Yeah. Uh, you know, he was he he did write some stuff with Ozzy and Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie and yeah like that. But uh, he had Terry Kilgore on there, which was he was on your filthy little mouth. But then he brought in uh, he's got John Five in there, which I think was he called John Five at the time. I don't believe so. I think I he think was, it was John Lowry, and then on yeah. bass he's Bourbon Bob. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Even though he doesn't drink, he's Bourbon Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys, rem do you remember when Dave appeared on uh, on Fox TV? February or March of 94, Pamela Anderson and Pauly Shore were hosting some event, and Dave came out, did a She's My Machine. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I remember yeah, this you one. Did. I, I have it somewhere on, uh, on VHS somewhere. I remember that one, too, because I was in college, and I told my roommate Mike about it. He goes, again, with this, <laughs> you're filming, <laughs> again, with She's My Machine. I just if, can't take it. If I can add about She's My Machine, when I was interviewing yeah. Ralph from Steel Panther, a.k.a. Michael Starr. Which I watched awesome. that. Great interview, man. Great interview. Oh, thank and your you. David, and your David Coverdale interview was great, too. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what Ralph's, or I'm sorry, Michael, what Michael said, because yeah, yeah. he's not Ralph, <laughs> you know, when did he stop becoming a fan of the David Lee Roth solo catalog? She's my machine. <laughs> yeah, I heard him say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It, it's uh, interesting, right? You know, I mean, I think uh, Dave, in retrospect, I think he said in his book, Crazy from the Heat, didn't he kind of allude to the fact that that was some kind of, you know, outside influences that were telling him to try try something different, if I recall co correctly? That's um, That's the vibe. So, what I've been doing lately, you know, you, I can tell you're a Howard Stern guy like me and Steve. Oh, yeah. The way that Stuttering John would hijack all the press conferences with the Baba Booies, I now throw into almost every interview I do a Van Halen question, even when the people clearly don't know anything about Van Halen. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> like, that's I did great. one today with, like, a professional wrestler where I went, because uh, he's in his early 50s, I went, so – 
Uh, I don't know this about you. Who's your favorite band? And is it Van Halen? <laughs> and, and he goes, oh, Van Halen's good, but uh, Limp Biscuit." And I went, what? Oof. What? <laughs> See, but that's where you could have said, you know, Eddie Van Halen almost joined Limp Bizkit. How about that bizarre <laughs> I story, have right? I that, but time... Easily one of the most bizarre stories I've heard in years. Yeah. Eddie, uh, Eddie, not really auditioned, but he basically just went down there and said, look, let's jam, right? I want to be in your band. <laughs> kind of like he wanted to be in Kiss. Exactly. So yeah. what I'm getting at is I keep asking like Van Halen stuff in interviews where anytime the person's over 50 and has been successful for a long time. And Butch Vig said that he was asked to produce a different kind of truth and turned it down. And Desmond Child said that he was asked to write with Van Halen for like the Roth initial reunion 96, 97 era. So are you yeah. starting to hear some of those stories too? Yeah, you know, I re now the Desmond Child one rings a bell with me. I do remember recall that, but you know what? Credit to you, man. I I, I saw that uh, article with Butch Vig talking about how he, he <laughs> turned turned down the opportunity, and and then I heard you mention on that on the last episode of the DLR cast where you're like, uh, you know, that 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 was uh the, my false news moment where I I asked. You know, I, I felt comfortable enough to ask Butch Vig about, about Van Halen. And, and, and there, lo and behold, he's like, oh, yeah, no, they asked me to produce a different kind of truth. Darren, um, Darren yeah, broke I, that story on the Paltrowcast, his podcast. <laughs> isn't that great, man? I know the Paltrowcast is, is I, I, I enjoy that. And Steve, I, I knew about you from, from a while back because you interviewed a, a buddy of mine, one of my favorite guests, Greg Prado. You had him on your podcast, uh, Weapons of Self. Distraction. Self distraction. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the side story to that is I did the publicity for his book, Take It Off. So, and okay. his previous okay. book, previous book, Shredders. And yep. uh, in fact, the company I do publicity for did a bunch of Martin Popoff's books. So it all comes full oh, circle. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the first time I ever saw David Lee Roth solo was at uh, the Hartford Civic Center on the Edom and Smile Tour. See, so we're Ooh, all coming nice. back around. Here. This is a. This is this is great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, Greg Prado is great, man. I had him on for that Kiss book. I've had him on like three or four times. So let's. But getting back to uh, Darren, no, I haven't heard it. I'm trying to think if I've heard anything else other than that. But it's interesting, Butch Vig. But you know, I want. I would like to know. You know what would have happened if Butch took the job? Maybe he would have been um, pleasantly surprised. You know, maybe it wouldn't have been as bad as he as as he anticipated. You know, but. But the reputation by that point was that they could be difficult. So um, would have been interesting if he took that. You know, you're talking about a guy who, who produced Nevermind by Nirvana. Man, that would have been pretty cool. Uh, but a different kind of truth. What a way to go out, you yeah. know, for Van I'll, Halen. I'll say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, big time. And, you know, we were talking about Dave's vocals before, and, and I – spent enough time on the comment boards for years, you know, on the message boards and the, you know, Sam versus Dave thing. And, and I really think people go to this default place where it's like, ah, oh, Dave singing sucks. I got to tell you on the 2007 tour, that reunion tour, he didn't miss a freaking note. Um, no, know. You know, he hit every lyric. He sounded great. Certainly. I think he sounds amazing on a different kind of truth. And for as much people who want to slag live uh, the live in Tokyo at the Tokyo dome, Man, I, there's, I just think there's some songs where he just sounds great. Even if it's made, they might be in a different key or whatever. I mean, I just, you know, love uh, somebody get me a doctor, right? I mean, I mean, just. Yes. Uh, women he's, in he's love. Hitting, women in love. Oh, big time. Yeah, he's hitting it. Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, to be fair, yeah, there are moments that, that you know, he's, he's hitting notes that make you kind of go, oh, you know. But uh, again, to his credit, he just, you know, he leaves it in there. He wasn't going to go back and fix it. But on the other side of it, uh, there, are some, there are some moments from, from that album. And I, and I think a, there was, you know, a lot of the, uh, the, the comments, whether it be fan comments online or, or the press or, or uh, podcast hosts, you know, they really started to pile on. And uh, I thought it was a little bit unfair because, again, like you said, there, there are some, some good moments in it. Um, I'm just thinking here. I mean, the one, the, the, the one that they did uh, from a different kind of truth that didn't, where is it? Did they do uh, Chinatown? Yeah, China, Chinatown did not come yeah. out. Yeah, didn't sound good, but hear about it later. Um, hear about it later is amazing. I love that version of that song. Yep. Um, everybody wants some, of course. You know, that, that is, is classic. 
Um, trying to think of what, what else. You're right. Somebody get me a doctor. And uh, I don't believe was, let's see, was Women in Love on the, uh, wasn't it on the album? They were Am doing that on the last one? tour. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's not on Tokyo Dome. It's, it's fresh in my mind because I watched oh, the man. final show that they did at the Hollywood Bowl. I watched it on YouTube yeah. a couple days ago. Uh, have you guys watched that one? Yeah, oh, yeah, I think that's the very last show that they did. I, uh, there's a soundboard version of it. Uh, uh, we put it up on the Van Halen News Desk just to let people know that it's it's up there. And yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Did you see the one that's without the crowd noise, soundboard only, or no? It was with the crowd sounds. <clears throat> uh, oh, minimal minimal crowd sounds. That he was kind of hit and miss. Like some of the songs, you would be holding your ears a little bit, and some of them he was awesome. But a thing that really had me scratch my head was there were parts of the show where it didn't look like Alex, Wolf, or Eddie had Dave in their monitors or their ears at all. Is that right. something you've ever heard before? Uh, no, no. I, I just, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of though Dave's Vegas shows early on where wasn't there an issue with his, with his, his something he couldn't hear the monitors right or something and then he corrected it. But I can't, oh, I can't. Um, I was there for the second night and the third night, which were totally identical shows. You're talking about the 2020 ones? Right. Right. Because yeah. the first, first few shows, he got hit hard. And then all of a sudden he came around and things got much better. And then by the time of the Kiss tour, he was sounding great again. That's, that's the word. I, I hate to dogpile here, but I was talking after the show to the guitarist of Rat because I picked him out of the crowd, uh, Jordan Ziff, who's awesome. Cool. And I, I thought everybody was going to be like, hey, that's Jordan Ziff. And <laughs> nobody did except me and my no, wife. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I was, I, you know, I was making small talk with him afterwards. I went, so the singing was good, but do you think maybe the, the, the backing vocals were piped in? And he goes, you think? Went, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I mean, that, that's the story that goes back a ways even with Ozzy. Ozzy had... Back 10, maybe 15 years ago, he would have somebody kind of you know, standing behind the curtain singing for him if, if he, if he yeah. needed. And, uh, of course, you know, the Paul Mason. Stanley rumors. What's that? Robert Mason from uh, who's in right. Warren these days was doing Exactly. That. From Warren. You're right. Yep. Yep. And Good now you, you said with, with Kiss, my friend Steve doesn't like to hear this. I love Kiss. but my, my Okay. Friend, I love Kiss too. My friend, who may or may not have been a guest on the DLR cast, told me a story about his friend whose job it is to run Paul Stanley's vocals live. And if Paul steps away from the microphone to stop the vocals. Hmm. And he told me the Eagles also have that on this uh, current tour. Okay. <laughs> which, which brings up the question, you know, would you rather see your favorite uh, singer get some help or would you rather just see him do it live? I don't hmm. know. I mean, Paul's sound, you know, Paul has, has one of the greatest voices in rock history, but as of late, sure, it's, it's, you know, it sounded rough. And I'd, I'd always rather hear it live. And just like yeah. Darren always somehow mentions, uh, you know, eat him and smile in Spanish. My, <laughs> the, my just above Van Halen and Dave is my never ending since, you know, I was 11 years old, love for cheap trick. And yeah. I'll put it out Great there. Band. Robin Zander gets it done every freaking night. Every time. No, no help. No tapes. The guy's, you know, 67 years old and still Amazing. nails it every time. So I would rather hear it live. I'm used to hearing it live. Yeah. But I mean, when you're, you got a massive show like Kiss and, you know, lighting cues and fireworks and all that other stuff. I mean, I'll give a little bit of leeway there, you know? Yeah. So, although I would like to believe it, I just cover my ears up. I'm like, no, it's him singing, you know, <laughs> know. But just like I did when I was 16 or whatever, you know, it's like, it's like, you don't want to see behind the curtain, you know? I mean, I was one of the last people to, to admit that pro wrestling was fake when I was a kid, you know? Oh, I mean, yeah. It's not fake, yeah. Steve. <laughs> well, I'm hard pressed to be overly critical man i just it just because i always try to be careful with it because you know you think about some of the comments that people made about eddie and now in retrospect you think oof, like some people would be just the comments would be like you know eddie eddie needs to get off his his ass and do something and you know what the hell is he doing just sitting right. around all day I'm guilty of and, that. and yeah. you know yeah and you think you think when when some of these comments were being written he could very well have been just you know 
in the middle of chemo and sick to his stomach, you know, struggling like hell and, yeah. and just to, just to get up in the morning. So I, I just, you know, it's, it's, I think when you start to get to stuff like, uh, uh, you know, are they piping in the vocals or not? Hey, if they are, and you know, and if somebody says, I'm not digging that, I don't want to go, you don't go, you know, uh, if, if, if it's, if it's, uh, if you'd rather, you know, have them pipe in the vocals, cool, man, you know, do it. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to be super critical, especially now, you know, these guys are, oh, these guys are getting older, man. It's, uh, you know, you, you always say one of these days you're going to regret, man. You know, Eddie's not going to be around anymore. And yeah. here we are. And I think that answers a lot of questions because, you know, they would have done something. Eddie wanted to do something. He wanted to, yeah. to get back out there, but you know, he fought like hell. I mean, he was, Wolfgang said he had, what did he say? Did he say he had six weeks to live in 2017? Yeah. Yeah. And then he left with another three, you know? So, um, <clears throat> you know, my heart goes out to, to Wolfgang and to Alex and to uh, Janie, his wife and, and Valerie, you know, it's a, uh, it's a tough thing, man. That's, that's, uh, um, throughout all that, you know, he, I don't think Eddie even read the comments, you know, Wolfgang obviously is big on social media, he knows, and he's, he can, he can handle himself with the critics, but oh, I, don't yeah. think Eddie, I don't even know if Eddie cared, you know, but, but I, but at the same time, I think, boy, some of the things people were saying about him and, <clears throat> you know, he was going through some rough, rough times there, you know? So, yeah. Um, I, I mean, even to, before, even before the cancer, my lament was, wasn't necessarily critical, was more like just a basic lament. Like, what have we missed with all this inactivity? You know, what music could they have been crea right. creating? I mean, I don't fault them because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, in the early 90s, there was some uh, very likely addiction issues, right? I mean, that could, right. kept, them at, kept them at bay, or, or I'm sorry, mid to late 90s, somewhere around there, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't, I would never begrudge anybody for having, fighting Paul personal de demons but i also wouldn't begrudge anybody just going fuck it i don't feel like going out there i got a kid i want to spend as much time with him as possible and you know if i want to i'm happy playing guitar at home <laughs> you know well, I think, but i, I, I think I lament what, what we might have missed musically you know oh, when there's yeah there's no way not to because yeah i mean i was bummed too because you know as we know our, our age group we remember the times when it was just a given that van halen would have a new album and tour out every year or two and it yep. was just a given to be number one, and it would be, and 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 Dave, Dave would be out as well. You'd have Van Halen with Sammy, you'd have Dave out there, and it was just a given. And then all of a sudden, it stopped after '96. Yeah, yeah. As, as Dave call it, the failing of Van Halen at the MTV Awards. Um, but, and you know, after that, everything was like, everything was different. Everything was, what's happening next? Why is this taking so long? What the hell's going on? Why aren't we? You know. And sure, that was hard. That was, that was hard. It speaks to Eddie as, I think, as a person, especially now in light of all the things we're hearing about Eddie from Wolfgang and from his, his friends and contemporaries in the business. And isn't it amazing that Eddie was at that point, probably by early 2000s, where he was not motivated by money. Right. He was not motivated by fame. He was not motivated to um, maintain his status as a guitar rock god. He, the only thing that would have motivated him to, to get back out there would be one, one of two things. Creatively, does he have something else he needs to explore sonically, songwriting-wise? Uh, and the, I think the answer to that was no. I think he felt like he did everything. He, I don't think he really had that kind of hunger to maybe create anything new. Maybe he did. Or, but the other, the other uh, inspiration would be his son. Right. Absolutely. And it turned out to be his son. Right. So the only reason he went out there is because of Wolfgang. The only reason he got back in the studio is because of Wolfgang. He loved that kid. That kid yeah. meant the world to him. How, think about what that says about if you are considered a rock god, so a lot, a lot of people in that business would get sucked into that world so much so that they would be addicted to that kind of fame and that right. notoriety and please worship me, please worship the ground I walk on. And then if a year or two goes by and a couple of new bands come out and they're getting the attention, Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I want my attention. I'm going back out there. I'm going to record an album. I'm going to go on. He didn't give a shit about that. 
I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, isn't that pretty impressive a, as a human a real, being? Yeah, you know? there's a real free, there's a real freedom in that. And I, it, it really bummed me out when everybody was just slagging Wolfie in the beginning. Michael should be there. It's not the real Van Halen, all that BS. And I'm just like, as a dad myself, it, it, you know, the idea that you can hang out with your kid at work all the, t- you know, it, you know, I mean, because what was it, what was, you know, how many musicians, they go on the road for 150 dates, they don't see their kids, to be able to look across the stage and see your kid and be, just be so proud of him. Yeah. And, and the fact that he's a monster musician as well. Yeah. I mean, how, how, God bless him for being able to do that, you know, and we all got to benefit from it. So, yeah, yeah, I, I my, my dad, you know, uh, uh, he's he's still with us but he's you know he's struggling these days he's in a nursing home but my dad uh long time radio guy i got into radio through him uh long time sports writer i got into sports writing through him and we had some great memories of talking radio and talking uh uh music together and and one time he he uh, uh i filled in when he was doing a morning radio in, in connecticut i filled in for the other guy uh, his co-host and we did a show together for a week and I, and I'll tell you man that was like the coolest thing ever you know and and my my dad you know is my you know he's he's the guy I look up to he's he, he is a lot of the things that Wolfgang says I think about that with my dad you know he's my best friend he's a great dad you know just a great person and and um, that means more than family means more than any any of that stuff so sure. again it goes back to Eddie just saying look I don't I don't care about fame I don't care about the money I don't care about the um, adulation. Some people have, have to get that. They need that adulation. You know, not that I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as you, you, you don't you know, uh, sell your soul to do it. I mean, look, Dave loves, Dave loves the adulation. Dave loves the, the, the attention. He's a showman. That's what he loves to do. So um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just, it, isn't it fascinating that, that, that Eddie just didn't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. And he, I think he did care about the fans. I think he, he knew the fans want what the fans wanted, but you can't just, you know, push the guy out there. I think I, I kind of feel like they pushed him out there in 04 on the Sammy tour. Oh, totally. That Could was just sad. Out there, you know? Yeah. He got A's off. Yeah. That's too bad. You know, he was, uh, he was in rough shape. I remember thinking at that time, I was working at the radio station uh, and the facts came over that he had cancer and he had cancer. And I was like, oh man, here we go. This is, you know, serious stuff. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, he didn't, he did not look good at all on that tour. And, and yeah, they, they had him kind of like what they did with member Jerry Garcia, man, the last years of Jerry's life, they were pushing him out there and he knew he was the, he was the face of the band. Right. So, you know, he's, you know, at, at the, the body of work is there, man. We got the low, we got a massive body of work that we can, uh, we can, we can listen to and we'll see, you know, like Wolfgang says, it's going to be a while before he even goes to the vaults and it's going to be a while. It's going to be a long time while he's going through the vaults. Right. Well, you know, so that's going a- to be, you know, yeah, that's a perfect segue because that's what, you know, we speculate a lot. What do you think is, especially you've got an ear for the news, obviously, at, you know, the Van Halen News Desk. I mean, what do you think is next for musically for both Van Halen and for Dave, really? I mean, you know, put all this COVID aside. I mean, hopefully yeah. there's going to be more music coming. What do you think yeah, is next? I, I think, I guess we'll start, we'll start with what's next for Dave and then, then we can speculate on the, 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 the vaults. I think with Dave, you know, he's just going to continue going. And I think he's going to go just like Sammy. I think he's going to go until he can't do it anymore physically. And then once that, once that comes to an end, he's going to find other things to do. And I think what you brought up a, a good point in the last episode, voiceover work. I mean, he, there's another thing he can do. So I think he's always going to find something to do to stay creative. Uh, he's even doing that now during COVID. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's in lockdown at his home in Pasadena and he's, he's, he's doing all these amazing illustrations, but I do think, you know, short term, he will be back out on the road. I, I, I don't see why, no reason why he wouldn't be back out with Kiss. I think he's going to, I think he's going to continue to uh, tour pretty regularly as long as he can physically do it. And I think he can, you know, he's, he's 65 and I, I, do, I just, I guess it's all, it's all our age and how we look at things. I don't see that as, you know, I, I think he's still got a, at least another, decade left in him where he could still perform right. you know he's not going to be able to to do all the back flips and all these things you know but <laughs> but i mean of course but he's still out there we well, don't yeah. want uh, him to go to ch- the chiropractor like you no are. no exactly <laughs> stay away from icy pavements um 
So I think he's going to do that. And I think he's going to obviously, well, he did tell uh, Variety that he does want to, he, really he wanted to release these songs that he did in 07, maybe just one at a time. That might be the thing he does. He may not do a full album, but I think those songs will come out. And I think he may eventually do a tour on his own without Kiss, you know, and go back out and do his own headlining thing. I don't know if he's going to, I don't know if he's going to stick strictly to Vegas. I think he's, you know, I think he's, here's the thing. I mean, he, he's at a point now, and, and I think, I, you know, I emailed this to you guys ahead of time, I guess, to what we can talk about. And I thought about, you know, the, you know, with Roger Waters, when Pink Floyd was no more, you know, basically David Gilmore had no interest in continuing Pink Floyd. Suddenly Roger Waters, you know, he was pulling in some huge numbers with his tours. Still does. And, you know, there was a time when Pink Floyd was around and Roger admittedly said, I'd be in the same town and I'd be in a half empty arena and they'd be filling out a stadium. So different circumstances. I mean, Eddie passed away. It's not like David Gilmore passed away. But I think, you know, where I'm going with this is like, you know, Dave's, he's even said Dave's basically the face of Van Halen from this point on. Right. You know, Wolf, you know, Wolfgang is, is rightly so going to forge his own path. He's going to do his own thing. He's not going to go out and, and insert five Van Halen songs in his set list. You know, he, he, he said, even if I were to do it, it's going to sound different. I'm going to do something different with it. So, you know, Wolfgang, that's off the table. He's not going to go out there and do tribute tours. And he shouldn't because that, that dude is talented as hell. Right. Uh, and that song is just, it's just a beautiful song, um, Distance. Um, and I love the way he's handling the media. He's just, he's just a cool guy, man. I, I hope to speak with him one day, you know, that it would be, it would be an honor to talk to him because he seems like a really cool guy. But, um, but so Dave is the face of Van Halen and, and I think he's going to continue with that. And he knows he's got that, he's got that body of work, that classic, those first six albums, they, they are, you know, bomb proof, man. They are like, I'm, you know, to quote Dave, you know, they are, uh, you know, they are timeless. They're going to be around forever. And Agreed. they're as, they're as familiar as the Nike swoosh. <laughs> Diamond Dave. Hey, and I think he's more hits than Tony Soprano. Exactly. <laughs> You've heard my stentorian tone coming out of uh, the, the flatbed trucks around it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I th so I think Dave's going to, Dave's going to continue with that. Hey, maybe he'll dabble in the Eat Him and Smile band uh, uh, possibility. You know, we'll see. I mean, we hope. And I, and I do believe, you know, he will continue to make new music. He's just, he's got creative energy that's boundless and endless and it's going to continue until he's, you know, he's, he's no longer able to do it. And, um, and I, and I'm looking forward to seeing whatever he has to do next. I, I think that, uh, I don't think there's any reason why that wouldn't happen. You know, can you imagine Dave just calling it quits and just hanging out at, at, at his home in Pasadena for the rest of his life? I mean, no. even if he was, even if he was wheelchair bound, he will find something to, to do to be creative. You know, he will. He just, it's just the way his mind works, man. He's always looking for something. And, um, you know, even, even I, I will add to the, to, the, to the buffet of Dave's is the interviewee Dave. You know, I mean, that's an art form in and of, of itself whenever he's a guest on a show. Right. Just being interviewed. I did an entire episode of my Discovery podcast on just Dave interviews. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I literally interviewed my friend, Steve Fratt, who interviewed Dave back in 1991 in Dallas uh, for Z-Rock Radio when Dave was promoting his Little In Enough album. And, uh, and, and Steve gave me clips of, of Dave and they were hilarious. And I interviewed Steve about what it was like to interview Dave. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many times do you... Do you get that where somebody's actually just so they're putting on a show as somebody who's being interviewed? So yeah. I think he's going to find find a way to be creative from here on out. So I'll get I'll get to my thoughts on the vault, but I want to know what you guys think of what what's next for Dave. What do you think? What do you think's going to happen? And what will you are you hoping, Darren? <laughs> what do Start I want to see from Dave? I mean, I personally would love to get soundboards of the classic era of Skyscraper and Eat Him and Smile. I would also love to hear any B-sides or alternate versions from that stuff and even A Little Ain't Enough. Like that's first and foremost what I want. The 1999 Finland show that I always talk about, I'd love to hear other shows from that era because he was singing great. Yes. Uh, I'd love to hear anything that was left over from the late 90s and the DLR band era in general. And then from there, you know, I'll listen to anything he does. 
I'm not as enthused as somewhere over the Rainbow Bar and Grill. I, I got to be honest. I'm not the biggest okay. fan of that. But some Dave is better than no Dave. Am I right? Yeah. 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 yeah you- I, I'm, I, I would love, you know, I'm just happy he's creating, right? Because, I mean, we're so curious about what he does. And like we were talking earlier, the guy's a true artist. I mean, musically, I would love to, I, well, first I want to hear the whole John Five album. John Five has been talking about it for several years and, you know, saying Dave is singing better than ever. And it, it sounded great on it. And it's, you know, that's somewhere over the Rainbow Bar and Grill. I like it. It makes me happy. You know, I mean, it's, it's upbeat. I like the lyrics. I like the sound of it. I'd love to see him do a, you know, a rock record again. Um, at the same time though, <laughs> you know what I probably listened to the most the last year or so, as far as Dave, What's one, that? it puts me, one, it puts me in a good mood. And two, I love what he's doing with it. There's, what is it? The 50 rides on, on love train where it, <laughs> on yeah, YouTube. You talked about that. You talked about that. And I, it's been a while since I saw that, but you're right. It does put you in a good mood, doesn't it? He is yeah. hilarious doing the and, dance moves. And like you, I've, I've almost hurt myself a couple of times. I have wood floors trying to, you know, <laughs> uh, imitate Dave's dance floors during love train. But when you listen, you know, it's, I think that was for vocal warmups, right? And besides that just being a great song, when you listen to what he's doing with the verses and just the chances he's taking, he sounds good. I mean, just about every, I think every version is different. I mean, I, 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 sometimes I just put on play in the background on YouTube and I don't listen, you know, I don't watch the video, but yeah. I mean, it got me thinking, I'm like, man, I would love to hear him do like, a, you know, another covers record, you know, but, but a bit more cohesive, you know, where it's the same band and maybe the same, you know, maybe it's some cool soul covers. I mean, when you go back and hear some of the, uh, the Van Halen stuff, the early Van Halen stuff, a couple of weeks ago, there was something from like Pasadena high school. Yeah. Yeah. And they do, they do a version of Rocky mountain way that just blew my freaking mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, you know, so I would love to hear, some newer stuff, but Dave just doing some, taking some chances uh, vocally. I mean, so many, pe- so many people think, oh, the Edom and Smile Band's got to back, got to get back together. Look, that's never going to get, that's just not going to happen. I don't think as far as recording new music and all that, it would have happened a long time ago if it was, but I'd love to see him work with some other people and do some different things musically, whether that's originals or covers. I mean, he's always creating. So I want to know, you know, yeah. if that extends to music all the time too. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So the 5150 vaults, you know, I, I, I do believe that they're, uh, you know, that we will eventually hear something from there, but it's going to be a while. Like Wolfgang says, I, I definitely no reason to not believe that from him. Um, I'll tell you one interesting thought that, that came from Martin Popoff when I interviewed him recently and I didn't think about this, but what he would love is, is I think what I'm on board with. If there's enough in the vaults, have, you know, have it where there's uh, songs that maybe weren't completed and you get, you get Alex in the studio, you get Dave um, and, and Michael to lay down their instruments and basically uh, do like they did with with Queen after Freddie Mercury passed. Songs that were kind of left unfinished, finish them up and put them out and have albums from the Dave era um, with, you know, Dave singing new vocals on them, um, Mike, Mike laying down new bass lines, Alex doing uh, his thing on the drums and have Wolfgang produce it. As many, if, if it's, if it's, even if it's not an album's worth, maybe just even if it's one song, Right. You know, from the, from the Dave era. Free as a bird style. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Beatles free as a bird. Some stuff, you know, if there's stuff from the same era, do the same. Even if there's some stuff with the gear from the Gary era, have Gary come in and, and, and lay down some stuff. I mean, that would be very cool. Um, I, I, I hope that there's enough in the vaults that they can do that. Um, one thing Martin wasn't really interested in would be like an instrumental album from Eddie. I would be interested in that. That'd be fine. I get it wouldn't be as, yeah, it wouldn't be as a big a seller. You know, he, he wants to have the vocals on there. Um, so I, I'm hoping that there's enough in there that we can, we can get that. I'm also, I'd also be interested in hearing what Eddie, Eddie said to Rolling Stone is that there's a lot of stuff in there. That's not what you're expecting. It's, it's experimental. It's, it's jazz. It's, fusion it's you know bring it up bring it you know um 
I think I think it will happen because I think you know Wolfgang. It, it's and and this is just me kind of projecting as as to how I, with like with my dad. My dad was a was a great broadcaster, and he interviewed Phil Rizzuto, and he interviewed Ted Williams, and he interviewed Tom Seaver, and all these guys. And I put those up on YouTube, and I want to continue with his legacy, you know. And and I think from if Wolfgang is like his dad, there has to be the right reason to do it. it can't, it's not going to be for money. It's not going to be for any of that stuff. It's got to be, is this going to help to continue the legacy of my dad? And I think that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and I also would love, I God, I would hope that there's some full shows from the day Vera that we can finally hear, you know, it, soundboard stuff. It amazes me that there's not a full pro shot, um, you know, full pro shot actual show of say like skyscraper which was so visual that that never came out on a live dvd are you kidding me yeah. that surfboard everything going across i mean that always drove me nuts because it's you get so, right you get yeah. some stuff from overseas and it's it's i mean just let alone eat him and smile but skyscraper in particular what a, yeah. i mean everybody was putting out concert dvds uh, late 80s through the 90s right i mean when dvd or well, the concert vi videos and then dvds i mean it, yeah, that just kills me. On the vault thing that you mentioned, it reminds me that uh, was this in Sammy's book? I can't remember, but I remember a quote from Sammy, and I'm paraphrasing. Don't don't listen. You know, I, I don't know if I have this entirely correct, but yeah. I remember him saying something like, "You know, there's not a bunch of there's not full songs up there. It's like it's like hours of hours worth of just noodling around. You know, right. Eddie and Alex noodling and stuff. So yeah, that's what Sammy I mean, said. right? Was it, do I have that right? Where it's just like in other words, it, it struck me as, listen, don't get your hopes up. It's just hours of these guys. Uh, yes. Yes. And so, yeah. He, cause Sammy said, look, well, the songs that, the songs that weren't put on the records were not put on the records for a reason. Right. You know, they, they weren't that great. So yeah. And, and again, yeah, I had an hour in there just noodling around for hours on end. So yeah. <laughs> so we can't get our hopes up too much, you know? Um, I, I, yeah. It, you know, you, you bring up a point though. It's it's like, what about the the Dave's version uh, of the fifty one fifty? Like his own vaults, you know that those right. those those two first two solo tours, and you think of all the all of the professional camera crews that were out there filming a lot of stuff. There's got to be stuff he could put together. And and how about thanks to Greg Renoff? How about the Greg Greg was the one who helped uh, helped me get get up on the news desk the article about dave's halftime appearance in in iowa <laughs> i never knew that game, existed man. that's oh yeah greg greg is so cool man he is he is you know if, if you're wondering if he is as a big a van halen fan as as you would imagine yes because he gets <laughs> oh, so yeah. excited man he's so excited he he'll he'll send me an email or throw me a text or he'll say you know uh Erica wants you to meet, blah, 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 you know, on the email. And, you know, this one was the sports writer at the newspaper in Iowa who had this great article <laughs> that he wrote about that halftime appearance of, from Dave in 1986. And then, you know, the Roth Army, I want to also uh, give a thanks to them because they tracked down the woman that was uh, at, that Dave was doing a little dance with on the, on the field during <laughs> halftime right. of, that, of that football game. Um, and she, she sent over this great story. Uh, about that experience and what it was like. And um, those are the things like, again, you guys were talking about in that last episode. Those are the things that are just starting to come out of the woodwork, man. So there's stuff out there. Yeah, there is, you know, the day out of doubt. these TV commercials. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that Darren, because that's the, during the skyscraper era is when he did those Toshiba commercials. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was, you know, when you, when you, when you see those, <laughs> It's it's like it's it's a great find, but you know if you could if Dave could maybe get all that stuff and and get the original footage and clean them up and do like a Turner Classics you know way Turner Classics takes these old vintage movies and cleans them up and they're pristine and yeah I I sh I should add two yeah. other things two other things as far as what I'd love to see from Dave uh, a second a second autobiography right oh, yeah I mean uh, you know I mean a part two so to speak no I sure. mean the rumor was that the original manuscript was like 800 pages and the yeah. editors were just like, holy shit, there's just no way you got to cut this down. I mean, he's got, I mean, he, you know, we forget that he did two podcasts the last seven, eight years and then just stopped doing them. Yeah. He was doing the podcast before the tour with, before he went on the road with Kiss. And the other thing you, there's gotta be what, maybe 
two, three, six, seven hours more of the No Holds Barbecue that no one's ever seen. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what that fantasy is all about, but I'm the No uh, Holds Barbecue. <laughs> but yeah. I am engrossed every time I watch it. It's like, okay, <laughs> what didn't make this cut? <laughs> the Mojo uh, Dojo. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh man, Diamond Dave. There, you're right though. There is there is so much more to tell beyond that book when that first book ends. You know, the reunion. That's, that's you know that's. That's a whole other episode. We speculate on that. How in the world did that happen? How did they keep it together? You know, there was non-disclosure agreements. Lord knows yeah. what else. I mean, it was so, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, the internet was around then. I mean, 2007 is not that long ago, but it was just, I mean, it shocked everybody. You know, I mean, they, they, have a, they, have, they had a great way. Of, what a lock of keeping information tight. Nothing. Oh, my God. Me. Especially during the internet era. Boy, oh boy, am I thankful, though, that they were able to make that happen in 07. Again, yeah. in 2012, when that album came out, I was just so excited. Um, 2015. Any time they, they were back, it was, it was just icing on the cake. It was like, okay, this is a little added extra. I mean, it, it, this is, you know, I already got enough to, to, you know, to listen to from the classic days and all the great stuff that's on, on YouTube and all that. But you're coming back and you're going to do this again. Thank you. Because I was yeah. not old enough to, to, to see Dave with Van Halen during that first run. I was like 12 when he left the band. Right. So this, this was huge to be able to see them in that, that 07 tour. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah, we'll see, man. The future, you know, that look, there's still, there's still that stuff to, to, to be discussed and the Van Halen news desk. I don't think it's going to be going any anywhere. You know, Jeff's going to be the one that makes the call on that, but I think there's plenty to talk about. Wolfgang's career is going to be interesting. You know, where, where yeah. is he going to be 10 years from now? And I think uh, we may get some, uh, some, some interesting releases, whether it's on audio, video, whatever it may be from, from the vaults um, from Van Halen and Dave. So I think it's to be continued, just like the end of the California Girls video. <laughs> and 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 we'll find and we'll find out about it first at uh, the Van Halen News Desk, no you doubt. Bet. <laughs> you bet, man. You bet. And uh, exactly. I want to thank you guys for having me, man. It was it yeah. was really a blast. I hope I didn't uh, annoy the hell out of you with all this talk here. But Eric, uh, no, the uh, opposite end. <laughs> Maybe part two will have to happen soon, Eric. <laughs> uh, my brain is just is just programmed to be like, oh my god, these people are gonna just they're gonna hate me. I'm talking about no. Oh, um, no, you're in the right yeah. place for it, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you would think that the the, the <laughs> DLR cast. Thanks, guys, for having this podcast. It's it's just great to have a podcast devoted to to Diamond Dave. So, and you got some great guests on, and lo and behold, there was Greg Redoff. He was on. Yeah. I that texted him. Well. I said, I said, Greg, I, I said, I just discovered the DLR cast. And I, in the text, I went, hallelujah. And I said, <laughs> and then, and then I see that he's on. I'm like, dude, you were on it. He goes, I was, he goes, he's on so many of these. He goes, and it must be good if I was on it. And you know, like, LOL, <laughs> LOL. Yeah. yeah, man. How about Greg? How about the work he put into that? Man. Those books? Yeah. Woo. Greg is yeah, cool, man. He's, he's, he was my very first interview on my podcast. Very first. Um, yeah, yeah, it was for, it was for, um, I think I just did it for the first book and then I had him back on again for the Ted Templeman book and uh, guy, you know, he gave me like two hours, you know, just a super cool guy, super cool guy. So anyway, guys. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Eric. Um, we'll get this up soon and hope to do part two eventually, but keep up all the great work that you've been doing and send our best. I will to Mr. Houseman, the man. I'll, yeah. I'll tell him you guys said hello. And, and uh, you know, if I could just, you know, vhnd.com, got to give that a plug, got to give the store a plug, vanhillenstore.com. And, you know, if, if you guys are classic rock fans, which you have to be, if you're Diamond Dave fans, you know, yeah. I, I do have the podcast Discovery with Eric Senich. You can find the link through the news desk on my uh, about page there. But if you just Google it, there are plenty. We we got quite a quite a bit of uh, Van Halen stuff in there, man. I did uh, I did an episode on Van Halen one. I did an episode on 1984. I got one on Dave's. Uh, you know, just his. It's called David Lee Roth: The Evolution of an Interview Artist. Uh, <laughs> we got that one in there. I got the Greg Renoff interviews. I got. Uh, I'm just kind of scrolling through here just so people can uh, you know know what they're going to look forward to here. I mean, I cover it all though. We're talking like. You know, Stones, Beatles, Zeppelin, The Police, you name it, ACDC, Tom Petty, all, all of these guys. But uh, I did, oh, well, of course, we did, we did the tribute 
my, my podcast I, I did in, in conjunction with the Van Halen News Desk, the tribute to Eddie. And I think, you know, hopefully, it, you know, if people haven't heard it yet, that's episode 92. And that's where we get thoughts from a bunch of people, you know, authors, Greg Renoff included, uh, photographers who worked, you know, with the band, uh, co comments from fans, um, you know, that, that was one that, that uh, uh, I was working right up until, you know, late at night, every night, night after night, just to make sure I got that out so the fans could uh, just get a, get a feeling as to what everybody at the Van Halen News Desk uh, felt, including, you know, Jeff, uh, as to, what, you know, how much Eddie meant to us. So it's all there. It's well, thank, all there. Thank you, man. It's a great it's podcast. There. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Ed. Guys, thanks so much. And I, I think we'll have to do this again soon, man. Maybe like a year from now, we'll have some really good stuff to talk about with Diamond Dave.